One Ton Live is presented by Vattenfall, Volvo and Ahus. In this episode of One Ton Live, the family make a concerted effort to reach the one ton target. We also meet Johan Payu, who designed a climate smart garden around the one ton live house. Gert Wingård talks more about the one-story house with its smaller overall floor space that is part of the Bright Living series. And the Lindell family take part in the World Childhood Foundation Day at Grana Lund Amusement Park. But first, we meet Hanna, who tells us more about the struggle against carbon dioxide emissions. A few days ago, we found out that our carbon dioxide footprint right now is on 1.9 ton. And that feels great. It feels that everything we have done finally has shown. And we have done some changes lately. We have stopped eating meat and no milk products. So basically we are vegans. And we have shut off our room upstairs. So we have a smaller space to live on. And also we have stopped taking the bus or everyone is trying to only use the electric car and it feels like these small things final has shown and given result. It's great that we're down to 1.9 tons. We're going lower and lower, starting to really stretch the limits for what we can manage. The week we have behind us has been quite extreme. We're eating only vegetarian uh, food, etc., etc., and really trying to go as low as possible. We don't know yet what the footprint will be, but we expect further lower. The kids are grumbling a bit, especially Jonathan, who's the family's meat eater. Look, this is a tough challenge for them. I'm truly impressed they're doing so well, really trying to stick to a vegetarian diet. Getting to 1.9 tons is a big achievement. All that's left is the last bit. But that's the real difficult part, those last steps before we get to our target. We've cut back on so much, and we're always looking for ways of cutting even more. Now we've made a huge stride forward, getting to 1.9 tons, and we expect the results will be even better at the next assessment. Let's go! Our meals are ready here. In addition to their vegetarian diet, Nils and Alicia reduced their carbon dioxide emissions by taking a home-cooked lunch to work instead of eating out. All the food cooked at the Lindell home is now vegetarian, without any dairy ingredients to minimize emissions, like this apple pie that Alicia has baked. Today, Juan Payo arrives to visit the family. He explains his assignment to create a climate smart garden around the One Ton Life house. My name is uh, Johan and uh, I'm a landscape architect. Uh, I have been working with this concept uh, together with the architects from Vingord. And we, we, we got the commission to uh, create a climate smart garden. And what is that really? So we, we started off to think about both the biological parts, uh, but mainly the way you uh, treat the site before you start to build it to see the local landscape and to get connected with it uh, without destroying something during the time of uh, uh, building the house. So that's really the basics for a landscape garden, not to destroy the values you have on the site. One way of reducing the household's carbon dioxide footprint would be for the family to move to a smaller house. Here the Lindells simulate such a move by closing off parts of their home. To supplement the one-ton life house, Gert Wingård has designed one-story units whose smaller living area generates lower emissions and less energy consumption. We came up with sort of an answer now for the Bright Living 3 and 4 where we just do a one-story solution where the living room and the kitchen is even tighter and where we reduce the total square footage from about uh, 1,500 square feet to about 1,250 square feet. It's a reduction of about 250 square feet. 
And I think that's quite viable if you want to save. I think the future of, living, of um, building is really to reduce the square footage per person. I think today there is a lot of emphasis in every single project on the energy consumption and everybody wants to have a certified building. And I also think that the community, like a county or something, they always specify to the people that are going to buy their land that they have to be energy efficient. And that sort of drives the entire uh, sector of building into being more and more energy efficient. When the Wonton Life House produces more energy than it consumes, the surplus is supplied to Vattenfall via the national grid, thus benefiting other electricity consumers. The more the sun shines, the smaller the family's carbon dioxide footprint. On a day like this when the sun's out, you feel even better. Not just because of the lovely weather, but also because our solar panels are producing an electricity surplus, which can be sent to this neighbor here or that one there. Our house meets part of their power needs. On the 22nd of May, the Lindells participated in the World Childhood Foundation at Gramalund, whose aim is to collect money for the benefit of vulnerable children. Their know-how came in useful as they shared their expertise on how best to live a climate-smart one-ton lifestyle. So today we're here at Gulabalun to participate in the Shampoo Day and tell people about one-ton life and what it is. And we're helping Ike, Vattenfall and Volvo to tell them or tell the people who have questions about what one to life is and what we're doing here. And right now I'm standing at Volvo's um, area and our electric car is here today also so people can see it and ask questions about it and simply learn more about everything. Many people wonder about food and its climate impact. We've received many tricky questions. It's easy to see that people are thinking about this. It feels great to be here and talk about these important issues, doing our best to give answers. It was lovely that the family were able to be here today. They were here in our tent for almost an hour, chatting with everyone. It seems to come so naturally to them. They're truly living this lifestyle now. Our six months with Wonton Life have given us a whole lot of know-how. And it's fun being able to pass on what we've learned, to youngsters especially, but to others too. Relating our experiences, what we know and have learned. We are able to use all the things we have learned in the project. We are not experts in the climate issue, but we have experiences from living the one-ton life or close to the one-ton as it is now and people are very interested and we try to help out as good as we can. In week 19, the Lindells were down to 1.9 tons per person per year. Now we'll meet Lars Eide Klint, who'll talk about this past week, which has been the most extreme so far. One and a half tons. That's the fantastic result that the family reached last week. They've pulled out all the stops to succeed. Congratulations, Lindells. One and a half tons. Excellent. Now we have a few weeks left in the project, and, and the last weeks we're going to let go a bit again. We're going to add fish, uh, consume a bit, and, and living less extreme. And then we find out what is the comfort level if you come from the extreme end of the scale. Will it be the same as uh, when you come from the more uh, generous part? We have to see, find out what, what habits will we keep and what, what are not so dear to us. We've made some pretty radical changes. For instance, with our food, we're vegans now. We've closed off part of our house. The TV room is off limits. We take lunch from home. We eat vegetarian meals. We carpool much more. We'll see if we continue for another week, see how it works out. Otherwise, we thought we'd add in a few things, start eating fish again and monitor the results. Uh, in the next episode, the environmental minister is coming here to this house to look at it. And there are several others that are coming with him and it's going to be really exciting. And I also think he will shut off the energy watcher because our time here has come to an end. So we're going to take the measurements from this house and compare it to the new measurements that will come when we move back to our old house. 
but stay tuned and watch because I think it's going to be really exciting. The next episode of One Ton Live will be on the 17th of June. See you then.